Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by and welcome to part one of the Project Orchids update set. Um, for those of you who are new or don't know, um, last December a set of plants from the collection um, were chosen, some by me, some by viewers, to get regular updates and they were endearingly called the Project Orchids. They have remained the same through the updates and um, the idea was to benchmark the group of orchids last December, which was when this very long-term project started, and then do updates throughout the year. So um, the selected plants were filmed back in December at the start of the uh, project, and then effectively were updated sort of April, May time, um, and several updates have happened, and this will be the last update before the final review which will take place in December again where we will have videos benchmarking the progress of this group of orchids throughout an entire year obviously that would be impossible to do for the whole collection especially as some join and some leave um, so in this first part um, we'll be going over the same set of orchids yeah in the same order, the orchids will be listed in the description and I'll put a link to the entire playlist. <clears throat> the playlist is not just the project updates, it includes some that have been repotted along the way. Um, everything to do with this set of orchids I've tried to capture in this playlist. Um, obviously the amount of time needed to watch the whole playlist is quite extensive, I wouldn't expect anybody to do that. Um, <clears throat> but. In part one, this one, um, it's mainly on Sidiums with a few others thrown in as an example of orchids that I might only have a few of. Um, and as I said, um, we'll be looking at a picture of what they looked like in the last update and a video of what they look like now um, with running commentary. And then when we get to December, we will revert back to the pictures that were taken the previous December and do a, a whole year's worth comparison. So that's the idea of the Project Orchids updates. So let's get going with part one. So the first one is my species Oncidium, Sotoannum. This was got from Speciotic Plants last year um, as a good plant. Um, masses of blooms, very fragrant, very pleased with the plant and um, in the last update it was out of bloom and the set of new growths across the front there were progressing nicely. It had been repotted and pushed out some good roots and basically just looking for more progress and um, hopefully some spikes down the line. That would be good. Well I think the main difference on this one since we last looked at it is the sheer number of spikes coming out. Um, literally uh, they're coming out all over the place um, I mean in this particular growth there's actually three spikes coming out of the same leaf joint and another one below and others on the other side again two spikes so it's going to produce a lot of blooms um, they don't last for ages but the spikes are all at different stages um, so it should be in bloom a long time. Um, a few of the older leaves are starting to get a bit tired, um, that's expected. Um, the new growths actually matured in such a way that um, they actually changed shape. So since we last looked at it, the front of the plant where all the spikes are and what were the new growths then have matured and grown into such a size that they've actually changed the shape of the plant and this, this particular growth to to find room to grow is actually pushed out sideways. And the other thing is we've got our first new growth on a mature pseudo bulb that's currently producing spikes. Um, that's a little not normal. Um, a lot of oncidiums wait for the blooms to finish and then produce their new growths but um, this one's very vigorous so it's starting its first new growth I expect others to follow soon and the reason this was deliberately potted in such a way was that all these new growths across this part of the plant have got room to produce these and grow to that size yeah before they reach the edge of the pot 
Um, I've got a massive pot full of roots, well pleased with the root system on that one. It's just a vigorous plant, it just grows well. So uh, we can expect blooms down the line for this one. And um, yeah, it, it turned out to be a good buy. Bloomed for ages last time and I think it's going to do it again. So well pleased with that one. And it's probably one of my few Oncidium species. Uh, most of the Oncidium types are either hybrids or intergenerics, but you know, this is a species, which is good. And probably my most vigorous of the Oncidium types. Unusual for a species, they normally lag behind some of the hybrids. Good plant. The next one is Miltonia Sunset. This hadn't long been um, repotted. It was three pieces rescued from Fusarium and we were watching the new roots coming from the three new growths on the three pieces, each of which consisted of two older bulbs and a new growth. And the new growths were pushing on quite nicely and at this point we were starting pro to produce quite a reasonable root system and given the recovery from Fusarium I was well pleased with its progress back in this update and um, I was hoping perhaps that these new growths would bloom um, but given its state of rescue that what that wasn't predetermined that wasn't you know a, <laughs> an absolute it was more of a hope so uh, let's see how we got on with this one okay several changes on this one first obvious one is it's now in bloom all three of the new growths that we looked at last time have produced spikes and um, also it was potted on something I don't do very often hardly ever I would say um, the three pieces that make up this plant were put in the smallest pot I could get them in which promptly absolutely became jam-packed with roots so what we did was we just put it in a larger pot teased a few of the roots out and put new media around the outside of those roots being a branching root system they should now fill this pot but the idea of doing it then was that once these blooms are finished there will probably be another set of new growths and they'd have had nowhere to go they'd have been over the side of the pot and produced aerial roots which don't hydrate as well yeah so uh, that was the principle behind it and as with the previous plant this plant was on my display table while the brassias were there so the aphids have got on here too and um, if you look on this spike not too bad and the leaves underneath not too bad you come round here that's what the aphids have done that's not the aphids themselves that have done that that's their droppings that have got on the blooms and turned into sooty mould which will wipe off it is just a surface mould but if it's left for any length of time it can start doing damage to leaves you can see there's some aphids on that leaf there so I'm not only going to have to spray this plant I'm going to have to spray the blooms as well um, they have been on the plant some time so if they discolour or it does them any harm I'll have to put up with it but what I don't want is this mould getting a hold on the leaves and starting to do damage to those which it will do the leaves are actually wet at the moment because this one was on the floor waiting to be filmed while I sprayed the other one <laughs> so it's had um, residual spray but it hasn't had its proper spray yet so I'll get on and do that and um, then relatively soon afterwards I'm going to have to wipe the leaves this sooty mould should not be left for any length of time it will damage the leaves but it, it doesn't take much to wipe it off I mean you can just wipe it off with water and um, a cotton wool pad if you want that will get rid of it but it's not necessarily going to kill off the spores so what I usually do is, is use rubbing alcohol with a cotton wool pad um, and that stops it coming back under normal circumstances unless you've still got the aphids of course so we'll get rid of them expectations from this are some new root growth and some new 
um, pseudobulb growth, some new actual growth in the not too distant future. And we'll see how we get on with that one. I would say it's successfully recovered from its fusarium because this was the one we picked deliberately. This was badly infected when it was potted up as three separate plants with a lot of the older part of the plant cut off. So it, it, I think it's recovered okay from that. Um, now all we've got to do is recover it from the uh, outbreak of aphids. Now this is my um, Bratonia Shelob Tolkien, quite a favourite amongst the uh, viewers. Um, spectacular blooms, fragrant, it's got everything going for it, this plant. Um, last time we looked, um, it had uh, been repotted earlier, the two new growths were pushing on, and even though not fully matured, the spikes were already forming. Some Oncidium Alliance types do that, they don't need to mature to produce their spikes, and this is one of those. Um, so. You know, we were looking forward to flowers at this particular point. Um, the new growths were pushing out roots, so uh, progress was good. Let's see if we maintained it. Now this one had spikes on when we looked last. Um, they con uh, subsequently bloomed. Um, this one went off to Malvern, and it came back with the sulks, quite honestly. It's... Um, Bloom spikes have been finished some time now. Malvern was the middle of June. You know, obviously, um, Shelob Tolkien blooms don't last forever. Um, they, they don't do bad, but it's still an Oncidium type. Well, probably more brassier than Oncidium, but nonetheless, you know, in the Alliance. Um, and I've been waiting for new growths on this for ages. And just literally, I've seen the bulge in the sheath there. So that's my next new growth coming here. I can't see one on the other latest growth at the moment, but it will come soon. Um, so, yeah, the next thing that's going to happen on that is a pair of new growths. The previous two that um, bloomed produced good roots, so I've got a nice root system in the pot. It's happy. It can stay in this pot. It hasn't too long been repotted. Um, so there's time before a repot for the next two growths to grow and bloom and start the following ones, which is when it will get repotted again. But it can stay in there for now. It's doing okay. I might change my mind. If those two new growths push out and start producing a hell of a new root system, I might just change the media. Um, if it's done at the right time, it does no harm. Whereas leaving it in the pot too long can. And this pot has got some moss in it you know, which will break down quite a bit faster than the bark, and as it breaks down, it will take the bark with it and start the process into the bark as well. Pure bark doesn't tend to do that. Um, tends to last as long as, or as good as the bark is, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, um, looking forward to new growths on that. Um, and given the time of year now, they're going to grow on through the winter. So, you know, not all Oncidiums produce <laughs> new growth in the spring, which means if you're waiting for new roots to go with the new growth at some point, not necessarily when they're new, um, then that's the time you repot. Just because it says repot your orchid in the spring in the book, don't take any flipping notice. Let your plant tell you when to repot it. And you'll lose far less roots, you won't set the plant back anywhere near as much, if any, and you get a more vigorous, stronger plant, because it's got a healthy root system. Maintaining that root system is the goal, not just pretty blooms. Although these are. <laughs> so that's that one. My Oncidium Twinkle Red Fantasy was one that I decided to mount. Um, I don't think it had been long on its mount last time we looked, but at, at this particular point it was starting to push out an awful lot of new growths, some more advanced than others, um, but it was starting to clump up nicely, and um, I was looking forward to all of those growths progressing through the growing season, and um, eventually, hopefully, producing some spikes, and if all of the new growths were to spike, it would be quite a mass blooming. Um, obviously later in the year the spikes do take a while to grow and well and get their buds and actually open but progressing nicely and did well on the mount. Well, this is probably my strongest growing twinkle. 
Um, it's incredibly vigorous and it really took to being mounted. Um, it's, it's absolutely smothered in roots all over the mount, all down in the moss and um, lots of new growths. They're maturing now and it's coming into spike in various places. We do have some spikes. Yeah. So they've only just started. I'm only just starting to see them. But the fact that they're there, um, you know, all the new growths will eventually produce probably a minimum of two spikes. Um, some may produce three or even four. Um, but the growths are all at different stages. Um, you know, we've got some growths around here that are relatively young. Um, they're going to take quite a long, long, lot longer to mature and produce their spikes. So once this gets going and starts producing blooms, I think it's going to be in bloom a very long time. We could even hit three months because of the different stages of the growths, which is good. So good progress on that one. Uh, a couple of the oldest pseudo bulbs are starting to get tired leaves, and some of these leaves were cut on the plant when I got it. So that's not me trimming the leaves off. That was somebody else did that before I got it. Nonetheless, good progress on that one. Well pleased and blooms to come. But when you see twinkle spikes starting, they seem to push away from the pseudo bulbs quite quick. At that point, don't hold your breath because they then seem to take absolutely ages to grow to their full size, produce their buds, swell those buds up and actually open. So we won't see blooms on this for some time. I mean, quite a while. <laughs> but they will be there, so something to look forward to. Oh, I thought I'd pick it up before I um, set this, just, just to go over the roots that it's produced. They, they've come out in all directions and absolutely covered the mount. It's done really well. So I've got a solid mass of roots in the centre there, and many have pushed out. It's fully attached now. I could actually take its tie off if I wanted. It's absolutely attached. Really pleased with its root system. So, well done. Now this one is um, in a naming conflict at the moment, but I'm pretty confident this is Miltonia Sunset Glory. Um, we had a problem with Summer Glory and Summer Breeze and quite a few Miltonias getting all muddled up. That's teach me to repot them all at the same time. But this is the project plant, irrespective of what it's called. Um, I was having trouble with this one at the time because um, it was all growing at an angle. I had to repot it and the latest growth, the roots were quite high. I was worried at the time that they were too aerial and would probably dry. So I needed to do something. But out of that new growth, we did have the start of another new growth which you can just see at the base of the uh, pseudo bulb at the front so that's where we were at that point well not everything works well and some things don't um, this one last time hadn't long been repotted and it was um, it, it had to go at a funny angle leaving what was the latest growth high um, and I did say um, in the last video that I would be putting some moss or something around a, a hell of a lot of aerial roots to give them chance to get down in the pot. That bit worked, but um, it promptly dumped virtually all of its old leaves. Um, the two new growths have progressed that we looked at last time, but not at any great speed. Given how long ago that was, these new growths have stalled and I'm now very suspicious about this plant. Loss of vigour, although the root system did grow. Um, so, first off, I'm suspecting it's got Fusarium. Can't guarantee it. And I'm not going to hack it to pieces to try and find out. Um, I'm just going to treat it as a precaution. And the other thing I've just noticed, it's got some scale. Now I have got, I've still got some of these lurking, um, but as I happen to have a spray mixed up, we'll deal with those. I think they're probably just on that pseudo bulb. Yeah, they're not, they're not anywhere else. They're just on that pseudo bulb. But if they get on the new growth, they won't do those any good at all. So um, that's going to get a spray now for the scale, and um, because the spray I've got at the moment is non-toxic and non-systemic so it's not going to get into the plant if you know what I mean and then um, 
Literally, I'll have to mix up some fungicide now and treat that just in case it's got Fusarium. And if it has, and it's in this bulb, and it hasn't been treated, then it's already at the base of these two new growths. So they're not going to progress as well as they should. Um, hopefully they'll progress enough to produce a small pseudo bulb, which will then produce some new growths that should be clean. But this one could be lost. Yeah? Um, it's just gone downhill. Um, it's not happy at all. But we'll deal with the scale now. Luckily there's not too many. These are um, infant scale. I don't see any adults in there. So that's probably just one or two that have managed to hatch and produce lots of young. But um, there's enough of them there to worry about. So I'll deal with those now. And um, yeah, so uh, this may be the first loss of our project plants. When they were selected, they were selected at, as in various stages. They weren't all my best plants by any means. There were some rescues in amongst them. Oh, so it's just a mark on the leaf. I thought that was a mealy bug as well. They're all going for it. So we'll deal with this one. And um, we'll see if it's still with us next time round and what state it's in. But not looking good at all, that one. And this is the... Uh Neo Finesha Falcata that I tried to pot up in the Japanese style on, on a, ma a mound of moss with a, a little upside down plastic basket in the centre with lots of holes in. So it's hollow inside, it's just got like a shell of moss with the plant secured on the top. And um, it was starting to produce some new roots, so it was starting sh to show signs of, of getting going because the plant hadn't been doing that well and I was hoping this would sort of uh, kick it off. So uh, let's see how it did. The last time we looked at this one um, we were looking at a new fan coming out which has progressed nicely and the start of some new roots near the base of the plant. They've pushed on quite well um, but again I noticed this when I watered it and it was put to one side. This has got scale as well and little plants like this they can do a lot of damage quite quickly, so I'm going to have to get at these. There's an adult one there, at the end of my fingernail, which is dirty. I've been messing with plants. And I can see a few around the base of some of the parts of the plant. But um, root systems pushed on quite well this year, and it did bloom not long ago. So um, finally got it to bloom after several years. It has bloomed before, but it was a long, long time ago. So we'll, um, we'll end on the view, same as last time, with the newish fan out to the left and the new roots coming down the uh, front of the plant. But we got some blooms on it, that's good. Now this one was chosen because I've been rescuing this thing for years, literally. When I got it, it was in bloom, it was a gift. Um, greatly appreciated, look at the blooms. Um, and then it went downhill and it never really got going ever again. I'm, I'm pretty sure that had Fusarium when I got it, but various treatments over a period of time have hopefully cleared that up. And um, the new growth was just matured at that point. Not a strong plant, but at least I'd got a pseudo bulb to grow. And at this point in time, I was desperately seeking another new growth. Um, and a better root system. So uh, let's see what we got. The last time we looked at this we had a maturing pseudo bulb awaiting a new growth. Um, didn't have a good root system when it was repotted and quite honestly this plant has been being recovered for many years awaiting what are very nice blooms and I'm prepared to do that for blooms like this. So. Um, We've got our new growth now, and a good example of a growth that's probably half size, and it's only just starting to produce its new roots. So it is now going to generate a new root system. It hasn't been in the pot too long, so it's got some reasonable media to get into, and hopefully that growth will now mature. It's one of those where a lot of the old pseudo bulbs have dumped their leaves, but they're still plump they're still okay but one leaf left there which is yellowing so that's going to be the next one to fall 
So I need this growth to mature. Hopefully this gro growth will keep its leaves. And if this growth attempts to bloom, sorry, but I'll stop it. Plant's not strong enough yet. I need, I need yet another new growth on top of that one. Sounds like a long-term project, but for blooms like this, they are pretty good. So I'm willing to do it. I've spent years with this just sitting at the back doing nothing. And I finally got it to grow. We now have a decent new growth. We're going to get some new roots. Then I want another one. <laughs> this is good patience game, this orchid stuff, isn't it, at times? And this is my uh, Oncostelli Catatanti. Um, a spectacular bloom spike this thing produces. Uh, up to a metre long with 50 odd blooms and they're absolutely stunning the colour. Um, the plant had been put in the smallest pot possible and um, I was hoping that it was going to bloom in the not too distant future. Um, this business of putting these types in the smallest pot possible seems to be working virtually all the time. Um, this was in producing a good root system to go with that new growth. Um, basically it just works so uh, I'm prepared to stick with that and um, look forward to blooms. Now, last time we looked at this one we were looking at a maturing new growth. It hadn't long been repotted and had started to generate a good root system which it's um, sort of maintained, I'll go into that in a minute. But this growth that was maturing at the time has since bloomed. Yeah, Blooms have finished now so uh, the next thing that's going to happen with this is another new growth. And there isn't room in that pot to take another one. These are very, very large bulbs. Um, there isn't room to get another new growth in that pot. This is the downside of, of using a small pot. So unfortunately, that's going to have to be repotted at the appropriate time. So I'm going to wait for the new growth, wait for the new roots, and repot one that's got a pretty good root system. But you notice these roots are browning in places, and I'll tell you why. When I first repotted this, it's in a crystal clear pot and this was a bit before I got my black pots that I now keep them in. Like that. And the black pot shuts the light out, stops the algae growing. But unfortunately, if the algae's already started to grow, it kills it. Because it hasn't got the light. And dead algae in a pot is no good at all. So that will get repotted for two reasons. One, because there's no room for the new growth, and two, because there's some dead algae around the outside of the pot. So we'll get that one done at the appropriate time. We had a really good spike on that this year. Um, I've only ever had one spike better than that, and that was the one that was on it when I bought it. <laughs> That's often the case. You do your best to re repeat what you buy, but don't forget your plants come from virtually perfect conditions to produce that spike and then your conditions are not quite so perfect so uh, we do what we can but I was pleased with the spike this year pleased that that growth matured and produced that spike and on this one it's vigorous and strong enough that even though it'll only have one new growth I doubt if it'll grow two um, I'll still let it bloom because it seems to manage to bloom. I mean, that's only got three bulbs, that plant, one of which was the new one, and it produced a really good spike. So I'm sure it will do it again, given time. Well, this epidendrum, last time we looked at it, was looking good. Um, the new growths had spiked, and they were all in bloom. The plant looked quite nice. I've got a feeling that one went to Malvern. <laughs> therein possibly lies its demise I'm not sure but at this point in time this was a popular plant everybody loved the blooms um, lovely bright orange when they catch the light absolutely stunning and the plant itself was looking quite good things change and um, not everything goes uphill sometimes we have to accept that things go downhill and sometimes we may never know why. Well, as you can see, 
quite a dramatic change on this one. This one went downhill fast and I still don't know why. I still don't know why. Um, it lost a lot of its leaves. Um, obviously it was in bloom, the blooms were cut off at the appropriate time and it is recovering but that's gone from a nice looking plant in full bloom to a plant that's recovering and none of the new canes are coming from the base of the plant but I have got some yeah and they are producing aerial roots which will get down into the pot so it's recovering it's far from recovered um, but we do have, we've got a new cane pushing up in the middle there, we've got a little, I mean these are cakeys effectively, they're not really brand new canes from the base of the plant, but as long as they can get some roots down in there, and we've even got one coming at the top here, <laughs> um, but if it's going to recover, oh, there's another one up here too, if it's going to recover, I think the thing we can watch for the future is this cane here. Um, it's the one that's grown lowest, so it's closest to the media. Um, it's been repotted, that, that may be part of the problem, is it just sulked. Um, but it didn't have hardly any roots left when it was repotted. So it is now dependent on these aerial roots and at least some of them getting down into the media. Um, and they are nearly there. So I'm going to see if I can pull that one back because it blooms well. It was a vigorous plant. And I still don't know what went wrong with that. But you can't have successes all the time. And um, I, as I say, I don't know. There's no way that had too much light. There, you know, I mean, um, in suitable climates, a lot of people just grow them out in the garden where they get sun. You know, so it's not too much light. Um, difficult to say. But um, recovering slowly. We'll see how we get on with that one. Now this Bulbophyllum Wilbur Chang was chosen because it was a non-bloomer rather than any other reason. And at this particular point there were lots of things growing that um, I was hoping, <laughs> as one does. But no, they turned out to be new growths. So at this particular point I could sort of detect, if you look at the one in, in the middle there, it's pretty obvious a growth, not a spike. Um, the plant was quite nice, it, it, it looked quite good, it had nice shiny leaves, um, the old one in the centre you can see was yellowing, but it um, wasn't a bad looking plant, but as is always the case when you've got something that won't bloom, you need to change something, and sometimes what you change is just totally wrong. Well we've had some fun with this uh, Bulbophyllum, um, I've always said if, if a plant looks big enough and mature enough to bloom and it hasn't, then you need to change something. And um, well, the obvious answer is, let's try more light. Yeah well it didn't like that, one little bit. The light just affected these leaves badly. Now, this looks now like it's virused, yeah? But I don't believe it is. What I believe's happened is, first of all, some of the new growths. They, these were delicate new growths when they unfilled. I mean, the latest one's fine, since it came down out of the light. But um, that one failed miserably, and the little one round there failed miserably. That does look like light burn to me. Um, I wouldn't have thought it was in light high enough. This leaf's going because it's probably the oldest leaf on the plant. This is definitely an old leaf. I didn't cut it, it was cut before I got it. That's how old it is. The other leaves are okay, but we've got one over here. I mean, that looks so much like ring spot virus, but I'm going to put a theory out. When I brought it down out of the light because of the damage that was done to the tender new growths, yeah, and this is only on those new growths, yeah. Now, if it was a virus, it would be highly likely to be showing on the older leaves, wouldn't it? It would be throughout the plant. So I'm going to discard that for now. But when I brought it back out of the strong light, where I put it, un well, unnoticed, bad on my part, it was sitting in a place where when I water some of my mounts and I hang them up to drip, they were dripping on there. And some of, that, some of that feed could have been quite strong. 
Um, Bulbophyllums don't tend to like strong feed. And if you look at the angle of that leaf, and spots landing there could stay there for some considerable time. Yeah? There's no spots on leaves at an angle, but there there is, there there is, there there is, and there there is. All the spots are on leaves that are relatively flat, not ones that are more of an angle, if you see what I mean. But nonetheless, it's gone downhill a bit since we last looked, but it's also chucking out another lot of new growth now. We've got one in the middle here. This is a new growth pushing a new growth. This is the new growth with the decent leaf, also pushing a new growth. This little growth around here that's lost its leaf has also got a new growth. So it's, it's bursting into life again. Now, obviously, it's not going to get that light level again, ever, because <laughs> that didn't seem to do it any good at all. And in addition to that, I'm going to put it somewhere now where it doesn't get dripped on. And then we'll have a look and see what the new growths do. But I've got, as far as I can see, four new growths coming. It's still a non-bloomer. Last time we looked at the growths coming out, we thought, is it going to bloom? And no, it didn't. It produced more new growths. Yeah? If it produces another set of new growths without blooming, then I'm not going to keep it. Because it's a large plant, and I'm not putting up with something like that that I can't get to bloom. Which is a shame, because it's always grown well. Um, although it's had a little bit of a setback. But we'll try not to do that again. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just going to put it back and film it. We don't need to do that, do we? So we've got new growths. Out of the new growths from last time, we've only got one that made it. I would suggest that was the one that was either shaded by another plant or farthest away from the glass. The light didn't do it any good and dripping water with fertilizer on it and letting it sit on a leaf also doesn't seem to have done it any good. It's, it's probably just got, even though these seem quite thick and leathery, they're probably just a bit sensitive and, and that's all it is. But we will see how it progresses from now. Right, the uh, <coughs> Zygopetalum Luisendorf had recently been split and repotted into two pots and we selected one of them to continue as the Project Orchid, which is the one we're looking at now. Um, what we had on here at the time was a poor root system, <laughs> um, a potentially dying zygo, which is nothing unusual for me, that's, that's their normal path, but we had got a new growth. It wasn't a good one but we'd got a new growth, so the plant wasn't dying as such. It wasn't looking that good, but it wasn't dead yet. Okay, with the zygo, um, last time round we'd actually split it and repotted it into two separate ones and chose one of them to continue the same plant as a project plant, if you see what I mean, and, and this is the one we chose. Uh, last time we looked, what we had was two old pseudo bulbs and a new growth that didn't look too bad. Well, that new growth never matured properly. It's an undersized bulb, but since then it's produced another new growth. And what's more important, it's now got a root system, and that little new growth is pushing on reasonably quickly and is producing a lot of new roots. So <laughs> this could be a first for me. I think this will probably be the only zygopetalum that's played its normal trick. Blooms its head off, yeah, starts to produce new growth, you repot it and it promptly dies. That's the sort of pattern I've had to live with over the years. I think I've managed to recover one. Um, time will tell you know everything crossed and all that sort of stuff <laughs> but the, the growth did mature it did produce some roots that got down in the pot these roots over here are off of this growth yeah um, these new roots starting here haven't pushed down in the pot just yet but they will um, and it's got a root system to support what is not much I mean the, the root system that's there is not good a zygote should have a pot full of roots, really. But all it's supporting is three old leaves. 
yeah and this little immature growth and the new growth but for this new growth to progress is dependent on these roots they're already getting into the media so they're already starting to do their job so I think that's gonna make it <laughs> that'll be a first so there we go then that was the uh, project orchids update part three um, part one <laughs> And um, parts two, three, and four of this little set at this time of year will follow over the next uh, week or two. And then, as I've said, the, the final set of um, updates will be done in December and we'll compare back to a year ago in the previous December. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Some successes, some not so good, and some failures in this little set, um, <laughs> which you might find odd. But um, I did pick on plants that are not necessarily the best plants. And I did pick on some that were either struggling or just weren't doing so well. The whole idea is to get a range of orchids. Um, people will get fed up with just looking at the best ones. So that was the idea. hope you enjoyed it. And um, then you can look forward to uh, parts 2, 3 and 4 coming shortly. See you next time.